taking out some great clients, even losing money, you can fix it immediately with the Personal Branding Accelerator Program. I help game changers like you build a personal and business brand that automatically attracts clients who want to invest in you. Imagine waking up and feeling unstoppable because your ideas turn into dollars every time. Get booked onto podcasts, master LinkedIn, and attract clients immediately with the Personal Branding Accelerator program and discover the future successes you deserve right now. Have you ever had to work on a weekend after a grueling week of lots of speaking, lots of hosting, even doing stage hypnosis shows? And then you've got a room full of top business people waiting to hear what you're going to share on mindset, imposter syndrome, and the future of leadership. That was me. I'm going to share with you nuts and bolts and all of me speaking at Dubai Business Breakfast here next on Speak on Stage. Our next speaker is an absolutely, is an absolute sensation, an international sensation in motivational speaking and CEO mentoring. With a career spanning almost four decades, he's trained leaders from leading organizations like Google, Emirates Airlines, and even Pepsi. He'll be sharing his thrilling story from a BBC journalist to a stage hypnotist. So be ready to be hypnotized today. And he's going to teach us how to overcome our imposter syndrome, how to deal with rejections, and how to lead an award-winning talent. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next speaker who's already ready here, Dave Craig. And it's in my hat off because uh, it just feels really weird to be the only person wearing a hat in a building like this, so I'm gonna take it up. Um, yeah, it says Dave Crane, which is kind of important because that's who I am. Uh, how many people have heard of me before? How many people have never heard of me before? How did, many people don't care if you never see me again for the rest of your life? <laughs> Fantastic. Um, I want to give you some stuff today. I'm going to share with you as much as I possibly can in the time that we have. I just need to be very <laughs> mindful that I don't start prattling on and going on far too long. This took my time and I'll make sure that we're good. Okay. So. I've been in Dubai for about 30 odd years, and uh, I've been working on stages for about 50 years. So that makes me really old and great. Uh, but before I start anything, one thing I want to say is if you are 50 or around about that age and growing past that, then we have a crisis and pandemic across the world. They're stopping to, they're stopping appreciating 50 year olds. They're starting to sideline people our age and move them on and say you'd be better off maybe doing your own thing, which is kind of scary, but it's also a massive opportunity for you. That, that I'm sharing with you because I believe that's the beginning of something amazing, and all this will make sense a lot more if you've ever experienced that or you have a slight worry. Let's just have a quick survey. How many people in the room have felt that, but maybe at the age of 50, people will have a different attitude towards you, okay? How many people are younger than 50, so you haven't anything yet? It's coming your way, just your way. All right, so with that, let's get on with it. You're probably wondering who's Dave Crane, which is a good question. Uh, the reason I'm videoing this is my wife is saying, where's Dave Crane? So I have to make sure that I've got a video of everywhere I am, because uh, that's what stalking does. Okay, so this is me. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've hosted over a thousand events, and there's nothing more exciting or nerve-wracking than getting to introduce one of the best in the business. He's an award-winning international motivational speaker and coach. He's worked with celebrities like James Brown and Bruce Willis. I'm Jack Campion. I'm John Gray. I'm Jerry Bob. And I'm Perry Marshall. Anyway, I've worked with lots of different people. The sound is really good on this, but today it's not. Yesterday I was on stage over one running, um, doing my first stage hypnosis show in six years. So I'm a comedy stage hypnotist as well as a therapist. Um, and uh, this week I was hosting Jitex, which is the world's most popular IT event. Uh, and of course, I get a pleasure of being with you today. So it's a, it's a wonderful week, an opportunity to be here. Uh, and you can always put your phone on silence at any point and tell me you want as well, which is great. So what I've got here is I've got a podcast that I do live on LinkedIn on a Tuesday. 
And then on a Friday, uh, I have a Q&A session, which is an audio, and everyone's invited to join in that. It's again live on LinkedIn, uh, where we discuss all the stuff that we want to talk about, investing, reinventing yourself and working on your business. Okay, so I've got a book which is coming out soon as well, which is How to Be Unstoppable. This is my theme, How to Become Unstoppable. Now, just like Nushin is a very dear friend of mine, was sharing about her experiences throughout her entire life. Might have been challenging too, but here's the thing. I'm not gonna spend time telling you about me and what it is that I do, because nobody cares. Least of all me. The only thing that matters, and this is a real cue to what you do in life, <coughs> is if there's one question you need to know, it's what's in it for them. Whenever you meet anybody, whenever you've got a relationship with anybody, when you talk to your clients, ask what's in it for them and deliver that to them and then they will want to work with you more. That's true for relationships. It's true for your partner, for your kids, for your dogs, for your friends, for your colleagues, for your clients, same thing. So anyway, with that, that's a book that's due to come out uh, by Christmas. Make sure you get it for people for their presents at Christmas. It'd be rather cool, cool as well. But this I want to give you as a gift. So if you've got your phone, there's a QR code here. Just scan it, I'll move to one side so you can see it without me blocking anybody in the room. Just register and you get a special uh, PDF book on how to fast track your career. And it covers everything from public speaking to um, branding to being able to feel you can do stuff without anyone telling you you can't. Sometimes when you're creating a profile at work and they say, oh, you're not meant to make yourself bigger than the company. Forget it, just do it anyway. And this tells you different ways of getting through. This is my gift to you. Before we do anything, I want to make sure that you get access to this. Has everyone got this? Yeah, yeah fantastic. All right, good. All right, and also this is my community. When the pandemic hit, I was a speaker. I was traveling around the world, hosting big events. I was teaching uh, people how to be greater than public speaking. And what happened to me was I lost all my work overnight for two years. My wife was a wedding photographer, same thing. So we had to reinvent ourselves. Now one of the challenges, and I'll just be completely honest about it, as one of the reasons I wanted to share it with you, is I did realize that after two years of just going online and doing stuff and trying to connect with people, that I was suffering from a, a thing called burn-in. Not burn-out, I didn't burn out, but I kept going but I didn't realize that nothing was moving. So imagine getting your tires stuck in the sand and you're spinning them and nothing's catching fire, nothing's moving, nothing's getting traction. That's kind of how I got. And one of the things I realized was I'd stop being connected to people. I didn't really know who to be connected to because as an entertainer, you go out and you work with lots of different audiences. I hosted Dubai Rugby Sevens for like 20 years. You're 45,000 people who never remember the weekend because they drank so much. But I've done lots of gigs, I know lots of people, but how many people are my inside? How many people do I really know? How many people do I connect to? I realized that after the pandemic, I wasn't really close to anybody. So I decided to start my own community, which is this one. You're all welcome, it's completely free. It's on WhatsApp. And what I do is every month I train people on skills like how to do business storytelling, how to master LinkedIn was the last one we did. And you're very welcome to do that. Just apply to join, I'll let you in. Okay, so what's the agenda today? We've only got about well, just over 30 minutes or so to go with this, so I'm gonna get through things as much as I possibly can. I'm gonna teach you how to be unstoppable, empower you, create a brand new game for you to play, and get you over imposter syndrome, and also, if you've got time, make you a great storyteller. Is that useful for you if you get a chance to do this today? Hands up if you say yes. Uh, uh, keep your hands down if you don't care. <laughs> All right, well, for everybody who does care, then that's fine. So with that being said, this is a smart plan. We're gonna start it here. And I'm gonna give you a lot of stuff really quickly, and so make notes as you can. If you don't wanna make notes, just write it on your hand like you did at school, you remember you just got that. Okay, so here's the plan. What does value, what does society value most? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit tired because I was doing a hypnosis show for two hours yesterday on stage. Anyone, what does, value, what does society value most about people? Anyone, guess. We've got a load of smart business people here. Anyone? Being famous. Being famous, not bad. Anybody else? Following rules and regulations. Following rules and regulations. Powerful. Being powerful? Authenticity. 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 Sorry, what was that? Authenticity. Nice. Anybody else? Ethics and integrity. Integrity. Right, I'm going to put you out your misery. All those answers are very good, but they're not the complete answer. This is complete <coughs> answer. Status. Your status is the biggest thing, and this goes across all nationalities, thousands of years, any country, doesn't matter, status 
is that thing that people value you for more than anything. So how do you get that? How do you break it down? Well, let's have a look at it. Status is built into a couple of different things. First of all, society values status based on dominance, success, and virtue. So dominance is how much you are seen as the very best or what it is that you do. Feel free to take photos of any of my stuff, by the way, uh, or video, please help yourself to it. Success is how well you've done as a result of all the stuff you talk about, and virtue is how much you are a believer in the stuff that you talk about. So for instance, dominance might be Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo at football. Um, a success might be Elon Musk at his tech stuff, and the uh, virtue might be the Pope, or it might be uh, Michelle Obama, because they say what they do, they, will, they, they believe what they say, and they say what they do. Does that make sense? You know what I mean. Um, yes, thank you. I'm very sorry. It's been a long time. So, um, if you want to get the same status and work it, then all you have to do is, when you start talking to people, be warm, be gentle, be, be caring about them, that, that covers dominance. Expertise is success. So just share with people why you're very good at what you do and let them take something away from that. The more you teach people, the more that they get from it. And as a result of that, that teaches you what you do well and don't do so well as well. And sincerity, always tell the truth. I never tell lies. I know you're going, yeah, that's probably a lie. It's not. I'll tell you why I don't tell lies. Because I, I believe that for every lie you tell, you've got to get another 15 lies to make up for it. And then you've got another 15 lies for each of them. And I'm not smart enough to have the first 15, forget all the rest of it. It's easier to tell the truth, get it wrong, deal with it, and so there you go. And your personal brand is this. Your personal brand is what people say about you when you leave a room. So it's easy to say something to somebody's face, but when they leave and somebody says, who is that? That is what your brand is. So have a think about this, what you're creating with people. And so your brand and your trustworthiness and your, your, your status is about this. Credibility and trust. If people trust you and you're credible, they will do business with you. A lot of people say, yeah, but they're gonna like you. They don't have to like you. I'm not a huge fan of the name of somebody I mentioned earlier, who's a very, who's probably the global tech champion. I don't like his politics, I don't like the way he looks at people. Do I trust him to build a way to get to Mars? 100%, he's a genius, but I don't particularly like him. So when you do, Get trust and credibility, you've got to work at different companies, put it front and center, let people know that you are connected. And this is based on you creating your own brand. This is based on if you're heading towards 50 or you are 50, normally in your company you keep it to yourself and you think you're going to be okay, you're not going to be okay. Hopefully you'll be all right. But start gathering and thinking now about that side hustle, about growing that side business, about connecting with people, or at least putting it out there that you are doing stuff that's got status attached to it. When you do start building it, then let people know who's invested in you. This is me 30 years ago with Prince Charles, now King Charles. It's not a great photo, but you recognize his ears, so you know that it is actually him. You just stand like that, there you go. And that's me, probably looking like, I look like Oliver Twist. Please get out of some royal stuff uh, there. And there you go. I've worked with lots of different people throughout my career as well. I'm not showing you this to go, I'm great. I'm showing you this because it's important that you start looking through your portfolio of who you've worked with, how you're connected, the things that you've done, because if you go freelance or you start your own <coughs> side hustle or your own business, people are going to look at your status. What proof do you have apart from your enthusiasm that you're as good as you say at what you do? So I'm able to turn around and use these pictures and sometimes you've got to crow by yourself in and stand next to people. Sometimes, luckily, I've been working with all these people on different events. Doesn't matter, start collecting it. We're taught from a very early age to keep it all to ourselves. Don't go out there. Don't put yourself in front of people. But one day, you might need to have all that stuff. So bear it in mind. That's why I'm sharing this with you right now. So as you start building this and creating this, you've got to prove your work. People want to know what makes that happen. So to do that, You've got to embrace something. This is a challenge for many people, and this is at the core of every single movie that you love, every TV show that you've ever seen. If it's successful and you like it, it's because they embrace the core wounds. But what was my core wound? What is my core wound? What drives me to be who I am? Well, you might have guessed it from here. And you might have guessed it from here. I'm the only mixed race kid in the entire country. Not quite that dramatic. But certainly throughout my entire life, that was the case. 
I grew up and I was the only kid of colour in Scotland, well, the only one, but certainly in my town. When I moved to England, it was a little bit better, but it was all challenging. So my core wound is I realised I was never going to fit in, so I might as well put myself front and centre and just be there. People don't like it, they don't like it. They do, they do. That's not important. It's important to just do what I do, because I can't blend into the background anyway. Now, why is that a core wound for me? Because I realized after I went through the pandemic and I had to realize who I really am, that maybe that still drives me. I didn't know that. I had no idea why it was that I was getting to certain levels and failing. And the truth was, I was just proving to myself that I could do stuff, and then I just stopped doing it. Because I felt I'd gone as far as I needed to go, not to anybody else. But those of you who've been here for a while, you know that I used to be on radio for many years. I used to be the station manager of Channel 4 FM. I used to host Breakfast TV. And I got to a stage where I went, you know what? I don't need to do this anymore. Because I've proven to myself. So why is it a core wound that's important? Let's think about storytelling. Let's think about your story. Core wound. When you watch a movie, the main character has carried with them something that makes you look at every single thing that happens after that and how has that affected their core wound. Let me give an example. Star Wars, Luke Skywalker, core wound is what? Dad. Sorry? Dad. Is, yeah, he lost his parents when he, I guess, his dad wasn't a great version of it, but he lost his parents when he was very young. Anybody who's not seen Star Wars, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but we know who his dad is and he does not. Okay, what about um, Spider-Man? Anybody? Uncle, and parents when he's young, he looks at them. Every single one you can think of, every movie, when you see the main character, they usually set you up to understand why that character is flawed and then achieves brilliance. But as they do it with every character, everything that happens to them, you go, how are they going to deal with that? You have the same. And put it front and center. Don't hide it. Be honest with yourself because then you can embrace it and it really lifts you. So as you do all this stuff, it's important to know little victories do matter. Little things, just those little bits that get you closer to where you need to be. It might seem big, it might seem small. For me, that's me hosting my old teams of, of speaker training with lots of people from across Dubai. Over there, for 18 years, I ran Dubai Rugby Sevens Entertainment. That's a team I worked with pretty much for 18 years. Nobody does that, everyone saps people. I didn't, I kept my core team as much as possible. So all the things that I did over the years, I did them proved trust and credibility. I got to work with lots of big stars. Now, I'm not saying this to go look at me, I'm Dave Crane, I'm great. I'm saying it to look back at your photos, start collecting stuff, start collecting evidence that you are as good as you are. Because if you don't do it, nobody's gonna do it for you. And sometimes that means getting testimonials. LinkedIn is perfect for doing this. LinkedIn allows you to send a message to somebody as a testimonial saying, you are great, you're fantastic. And they have to send one back because LinkedIn gets them in a headlock and says, send one back, send one back. So start doing that, collecting the evidence. Okay, that's enough of me, success stories. So let's get on to it. When I've been working in my industry for a long time, I do get to a certain level and it's important to be able to prove to people who you are. Now here's the thing, you may or you may not know what your strap line is. You may or may not know what your elevator pitch is. If I was to pick on somebody in the audience right now, who wants to tell me about your business? Who's got go business, please? Can you explain? Stand up. What's your name? My name is Rafi. Rafi. Round of applause for Rafi, first of all. Thank you. All right, explain your business. I'm a managing director of uh, Blue Hat HR Services. We are into recruiting. We, catering, we are catering to uh, oil and gas, healthcare, IT, and construction industries. We are pretty busy nowadays. We are focusing on New York projects nowadays. Fantastic, round of applause, that's a perfect answer. Thank you so much. What he did there is he told you in an elevator pitch exactly who he is, what he does, what whose company works with, and the positioning. You can't, and, and didn't waste any time. So instantly you go, could I work with that? Is that of interest to me? You're not wasting his time, he's not wasting your time. But if it is something that's relevant, you go straight over and you say, I know somebody who'd be good for you, or I would like to chat to you. Can you do that with your own position? If the answer is no, you really need to be able to do that. Because often I talk to business people, I run a thing called the Industry Icon Program where I teach people to become thought leaders. And I say, what is it you do? And yesterday on my LinkedIn Live, there's a lady popped up and she told me seven things that she did. I do this and I do that. And I, do. I said, okay, what's the problem? She said, I don't get any speaking gigs. I said, that's because nobody knows who you are, what to do with it. 
She goes, but I know who it is. I want to change everybody. So I said, you can't change anybody. Find out what they want and give them more of that. And she started arguing with me. I'm thinking, that's why nobody wants to work with you. Because I'm trying to help you. You're giving me a hard time, but it's my audio. Click, gone. I didn't drop her completely. I did say to her, please connect with me directly, which of course she didn't. But it's amazing how much of who you are and what you do is evidence for everyone to see. Who you are is really important. So with that, when you go through it, there's a couple of challenges that most people don't know. Who you are is by luck. You go for a lucky life lottery. You don't choose any of this. You don't choose location. You don't choose a race. The affluence you're born into, the connections you have, the spiritual beliefs, your nationality, your gender preference, physicality, tradition, or your existing influence. None of those things are chosen by you, but you can alter them. You can add to them, or you can diminish ones that don't serve you. But you are who you are. To say the world is a level playing field, to say that you can do the same as everybody else is BS. You can't do the same as anybody else. Same as saying to yourself, I'm going to be the best I can be. I don't say that anymore. I used to, as a life coach, used to be my mantra, because I brought it from the US Army. Be the best that you can be. I don't want to be the best I can be. Why? Because it's too hard. I like the idea that today I'm not wearing a suit. I've worn a suit all week. I like wearing my hat. I like chilling out on the weekend. Once I finish here, I'm going to take my daughter to a rock concert, and I'm just going to put some shorts on. And, and look. Does that mean I'm not going to be the best I can be? I don't really care. I just want to be all I can be. On the levels that are important, sometimes it's family, sometimes it's work, sometimes it's my own mental health. Saturday is my off day, by the way. I'm only here because I was invited by yoga. I'm chance to work with Nushin again. Uh, and Emma's fantastic as well. I'm a chance to share with you some ideas. Otherwise, by Saturday, one of the things that my wife taught me is don't work, don't do anything at all. Take a mental health day. And during my mental health day, I don't talk to my wife. That's on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Imposter syndrome. Let's do a little bit about imposter syndrome in the time that we have. I'm very, very appreciative of the time. I want to make sure that I don't overstay my welcome with that as well. Okay, so with that, okay. That's okay. Is this useful for you, by the way? Is this useful for you, by the way? Yes. 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 Fantastic. Good, 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 good. All right, so imposter, imposter syndrome is that voice in your head that tells you you're not as good as you think you are. And we, let's just check. How many people have ever faced imposter syndrome? Right. How many people have ever had it? Lies! Everybody's had it. At yeah. some point, everybody's had it. Whether it dominates you or not is your choice. 92% of people don't uh, have suffered from imposter syndrome and are still suffering from it right now. I think the other 8% must be psychopaths. <laughs> or serial killers or something. Somebody just goes, <laughs> and they don't think about it. We all have it. But what most people do is they stop themselves being able to step up to where they need to be. I want to share with you a really good technique to get that same imposter syndrome to empower you. So what normally happens is it's in front of you and stops you stepping forward. I want to teach you how to get it, put it behind you, so it makes you, makes you go forward faster. Would that be useful for, for you to learn today? Yeah. Yes. yes. One person, I'll teach you outside, that's it. Nobody else wants to learn. Would that be useful? Yes. 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 All right, so with that, one of the things I would always urge you to do is speak on stage. If you don't know how to do it, then start working on learning how to do it as well. When you join my WhatsApp community, I will work through those different things with you. I've got various other communities and, and things where I teach leaders how to be great speakers. Why is it great to be a speaker? Well, you don't have to be a professional speaker. You just have to be able to talk. I don't even have to be able to speak. You can type it, put it on a, on a post on LinkedIn. It's the importance of knowing what's going on in your head and tailoring it for people who then value it. That's what speaking really is. It doesn't mean you've got to hold the microphone in front of an audience. That's one way of doing it. But if you can get it right, then it means that people instantly see it as the best possible marketing you could possibly have. When I first started talking in this room, there's maybe, what, 30% of the room had heard of me before. Now you all know me. Does that mean you're going to connect with me? I don't know. But it means that in a very short amount of time, I've only talked for about 20 minutes so far, you're very aware of who I am, what I do, and what I can do for you. That's why speaking is so relevant. But we're taught to sit in classes like that when we're very small and told not to speak because the teacher's talking and we've got to keep it all quiet and you get told off and that haunts us for the rest of our lives. It's not what we should do. For instance, my daughter who's 13 years old, who didn't want to come today so I didn't drag it, um, but I said to her when she was two years old, when she was able to understand what daddy's saying to her, I said, here's an important lesson for you. 
If you really believe in something and it's really important to you, then if daddy doesn't agree with you, or mommy doesn't agree with you, or your teachers don't agree with you, or your friends don't agree with you, you can tell them they can kiss it. <laughs> now when I say kiss it, you get, you know what I mean, you, you guess what I mean by like kissing, I, mean, yeah, I don't have to explain that. Yeah. And some people say to me, oh you can't say that to your kid, but think about what the world has done to you. Have you ever been stung with credit cards? Because you got them, because everybody else got them as well, and you realize that maybe they're not out to do your favor, maybe it's actually a bit of a challenge to pay them up, <coughs> or anything like that. Sometimes you have to find yourself, and that is an important part of saying no to people, and yes to you at the same time. All right, but speaking on stage is kind of irrelevant. Creating yourself, the person you truly want to be, is of great relevance as well. And I'm going to show you how to create yourself and get over imposter syndrome in the time that we have here. So I'm very appreciative of this. So I'm going to say, first of all, there's three, three versions of you that exist. First version of you is a birth certificate version of you. So when you get your birth certificate and you have a look at your name, for me in my case, it's there, David Maxwell Crane is what it says there. That's my dad, that's my mom, and that cushion with a face on it is me. So I was born into the world as David Maxwell Crane eight million years ago. And creating the person I am today is based on that starting point of that's who my birth certificate says I am. Let's start creating me. And you go to school, you have friends, you fall in love, you fall out, you fight, all the stuff you do throughout your entire life creates a version of you which is a social media version of you. This is a version of you that you have in your LinkedIn or your Instagram or as anybody in the room big on TikTok? A couple of people, very good indeed. Everyone else going, what's TikTok? Don't worry about it, it's fine. <laughs> um, so whatever you create as a social media version of you is kind of like, it's like a real you but a little bit cooler and lies a little bit. So every day is sunny and you're always getting job offers and wherever you go people recognize you and give you hugs and money. Yeah, it doesn't often say I hate life and I want to kick people. It doesn't say that too often. But that social media version of you is the one that I've lived in. I, I created Dave Crane out of the fact that, um, you know, after being around for X amount of years, and that's my beautiful wife, Aziza, and my daughter Maya, who's now 13, she will hate me showing that picture. And it was actually snowy, that's not dandruff. <laughs> I was in the UK, we went on holiday, just tell me now, please don't. Do. This seems so nice, but you know, champion. So, Dave Train was created out of that birth certificate version. But when the pandemic hit, it really hit me badly. Because for two years, I had to survive in Dubai, pay all the bills, do all the stuff. With zero coming in, I had to just scrimp and scrape, and we worked so hard, and it burnt me out, as I said. And I realized the importance of mental health. I mean, importance of just well-being and all the rest of it. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm in recovery now. I'm better than I ever was. In fact, I'm better than I was from before because now I know that sometimes I can just say no. If I turn down gigs, I turn down clients. I never did that before. I'd always want to be ahead of a rat race. This big client wants to work with me. Okay, they say you're gonna jump for these hoops. Okay, and sign up to that. Okay, and we're gonna pay you in 150 days. Okay, I don't and you do all this different stuff. And eventually, because you don't want anyone else to get the gig, I now turn around and say, no. I said, what do you mean no? I, look, this is gonna be a pain, and I respect you, but this is not for me. And people say, how can you do that? Because I went through two years of not earning. I can turn around, it can't be any worse than that, and I survived it, my family survived, so I draw a line of what makes me happy. Does that make sense to you? Does that resonate to you? You can do it. One, one day we'll be dead. Now, depending on your religious, your spiritual beliefs, we may be coming back, sometimes as a plant pot, or, or as you, or whatever it is, but I'm kind of hedging my bets on this is it. So I want to get to a finishing line as happy as I can be every day being happy and well another have are there any happiness coaches in the room by the way they're going to pick you terribly and no happiness coaches in the room or, or anybody got like sweaty palms you don't want to put your hand up in case it's just like really embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing right now right across the world there's a happiness face everyone's gone mad for it every company turns around and says we're high in the happiness index uae is one of them doing very well finland i think is number one in the world or denmark and so nothing wrong with happiness Nothing wrong with having it as a way of looking at your workforce. But I read an article the other day, and it made me reconsider it. Because how many people want to be happy? Be honest. 
Yeah, how many people want to be miserable or have got heavy arms or a sweat patch? <laughs> okay, you're not going to put your arms in it anyway. I already have. You're already happy. That's fantastic. Well, here's the thing. Happiness is the opposite of sad. True? So in order to be happy, you have to realize that you're not sad. So you have to feel bad to be able to feel up. But there's a middle ground. Being content. Now, what does content mean? What does that fit into this? So, for instance, I may have a glass of water here. I'm about to hear it. It's not, it's not deep vodka. You saw it come out of that. So, I've got this glass of water here. Now, I might be thinking, oh, my happiness would be if this was champagne and I'm on a yacht and uh, I'm listening to my favorite band are playing on my yacht for me and we're just sailing around the world and it's amazing and, and uh, all these supermodels keep saying hi, Dave. And I say, no, I love my wife. That's happiness for me. I'm drinking with vodka at the same time. No. So that might be happiness. But I can't achieve that. And if I work for that, because I'm looking at other people who've got it and saying, oh, you know, I'm not good enough. But what is what is contentedness? Having a glass of water. Does that mean I can drink it? Yeah. If I add some fruit juice to it, would it be flavored? Yes, it would. If it was some ice in, would it be chilled? Yeah. So maybe I should just be happy that I've got the water. Doesn't mean I don't aspire to more. But how many times do you beat yourself up looking at other people with a better car, better job, stuff on social media, telling everybody about they're amazing, and you say, if only. Whereas maybe all you need is what you already have, but just appreciating it better. So what that means is yes, strive for happiness, but don't go below content. If you can be happy and content all the way through, mm -hmm. and you can accept that, that's a pretty good life. Do you agree with me? Good, because when I say stuff like that and nobody says anything, it's either like going in and making them go, wow, or they're just going, is that his own hair? Yeah. Not ever sure. All right. So with that, I'm going to show you the third version that most people don't know about. I promise you, there's three versions of you. First one's the birth certificate version. The second one is a social media version of you, which we all have. The third one is to turn you into superheroes. I'm not going to put capes on you, and I don't want to see you in tights, ever. And you don't have it. But your superpower name is this. When you are brilliant at what you do, and you do get brilliant at certain times, that certain time it might be when you're playing sports, or it might be when you're sitting on your own, you're working on a computer, and you go, ah, or maybe it's when you close a sale, or maybe it's when you design something, or maybe it's when you launch a magazine or connect with a new country, or empower lots of women to be amazing like Nushim does. Whatever it is that you do, there's a certain time when you do something brilliantly. And you tend not to pay attention to it because much the rest of the time you're normal. But that's actually your superhero level. And most people ignore it. So I want you to understand your superpower name. Mine is Max. Let me explain about Max. My name is David Maxwell Crane. So Max is my middle name. I never used it. I wish I had. It'd be a very cool DJ name, just like Madonna or Sting, but I left it too late, so Dave Crane is all I got. So why is Max important? Well, here's the thing. I realized that when I was coming up the pandemic and I was dealing with clients and some people saying yes, some people saying no, some people got that's coming up and they weren't guaranteeing it and verifying it and paying me, all the stuff that happens when you're coming out of a pandemic, who knew it was gonna be like that? I found myself chasing clients and being jerked around quite a lot. And I didn't know how to deal with it. Do you turn around and how many people have problems chasing clients? It's a pain to get money off them sometimes. Everyone else is just minted crazy and, and you're just like, oh, stop throwing piles of cash at me. I'm sick of it. I don't know My car's full. No, you don't. So here's the thing. So as I was going through that, I thought, well, what do I do with clients? What do I chase them up? I, I don't feel strong enough to be able to re reflect. So I thought, well, when am I at my best? I'm at my best when I've got a microphone and an audience. That version of me can deal with sponsors, can deal with audiences, can deal with timetables, with information, with change, and gets the job done. That's the best version of me. I'll call him Max. The one at Rugby Sevens could go out in front of 20, 200 million people. I hosted the T20 Rugby, no, T20 um, ICC Cricket in the UAE. I hosted that. And I didn't know anything about cricket. I do now, but I didn't then. I just left it to Max to take care of it. So I thought, well, what if I let Max run the challenging parts of my life. So when a client turned around to me and said, oh uh, yeah, we'll get back to you, and I'm waiting and waiting because I've got bills to pay, I thought, right, Max, you, you answer it. And I'm not, I'm not mad, I know it's still me. It's just a version of me I decided to empower. 
So I said, Max, what do you reckon? And Max said to me, uh, why don't you give him 48 hours? And if you don't in 48 hours, tell him no one missed their opportunity of that, that offer. For the, the offer is no longer on the table. It goes back to your normal price. I thought, you can't do that. What if, what if, what if you lose a client? But I thought, I don't want to kill Max. I want to just empower that side of me. So I did it. And some clients came back and said yes. And some clients disappeared and never saw them again. But it wouldn't have made any difference. I just would have still been waiting for them to come back to me. So I thought, okay, that's interesting. So I started giving Max more and more stuff until the point where I let Max drive everything. Max is now in charge. The only time that Max isn't in charge is when my wife is in charge, which is whenever she's in a room or outside of a room or I'm breathing. Or when I'm just at home, I don't bring Max out at home. But certainly in every other aspect of my life, it's amazing how empowering it is. So I contact people that I would never contact before. And I do stuff I'd never done before. And it's all part of me, but I didn't really do it. Because imposter syndrome from a very early age, and my core wound is people won't accept me. I couldn't give a monkeys if people don't accept me now. I really don't. If you guys turn around afterwards and say, well, I didn't really like him so much, I don't care. I really don't. I hope it's not the case, because then I've not done my job of delivering something that gave you value. But I'm not going to judge my own ability to do what I do on the way that the world reflects. I think it's really important that you see that as well. When you get to the end of your days, you have to be honest with yourself. Have I given it my best shot? And it might reflect what people are seeing around you, but it doesn't have to. Because everyone only sees what they see in themselves. When somebody says, I hate that about you, they don't hate that about <coughs> you. They hate the way it reminds them of the problems that they don't like inside themselves. It's all a reflection. So that's Max. And, and a, an example of that is when they reinvent James Bond. Every time they bring a new James Bond, it's because it's a different time, different experience. Now you've got to ask yourself who you are. What was your nickname at school? When are you at your best? I don't know what it is for everyone we can spend time doing this, but when are you at your best? Give that a nickname. Might be your middle name, might be your nickname from school, and start embracing and asking questions and encouraging it, because that is your way to deal with imposter syndrome. You might not be able to, but that version of you can, so let it. Okay, I realize we're short on time, I'm just gonna share a few more things with you if that's okay, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. One, two, three people, everyone else is talking. I don't like his hair. <laughs> Put the hat on again later on. So what makes a truly great leader? Anybody, what makes a truly great leader? Empathy. Empathy? Creating more leaders. Creating more leaders, that's good, I like that. Trust on others. Should I say it again? Trust, trust on others. Trust others. on others, relying on others. Very good indeed. Anybody yeah. else? Development of others. Developing others. That's very good. Anybody else? A mindset? Mindset? I think mindset is the heart of everything anyway. Walk the talk. Can you be a walk the talk? Can you be a leader if you don't have others to develop? <coughs> no? Really? Can you be a leader if you don't have anyone to develop? Yeah. <coughs> you think Gandhi or Nelson Mandela had a social media to check on everybody when they were doing their stuff? They were doing their own thing and they mostly felt on their own. Yes, it had great ramifications worldwide, but Mandela spent 27 years in prison being a leader on his own. So there's nothing wrong with doing it on your own. You can be on your own. People may or may not join you, but that doesn't stop you being a leader. <laughs> this is an important thing. In corporate world, we're taught you have to lead people, and there's nothing wrong with that, but whether they follow you or not, it doesn't mean you're not a leader. Sometimes a leader is on their own. Sometimes a leader is an artist that creates something that nobody else, else appreciates, but later on we go, ah, that was ahead of their time. Don't be scared of leadership, and you don't have to have it as a reflection of what everybody else appreciates from you. I would say a great leader asks better questions, always checking to see if what I'm doing is could be done better. That will position you as having that ongoing conversation with yourself, and if you test yourself and push yourself, <coughs> other people will follow you and work with you as a direct result. Does that make sense? So with that, you can give better answers to people because then they'll appreciate the fact that you are doing that. Most people don't ask great questions. Most people are scared of what the answer would be. 
There's nothing I'm particularly scared of when it comes to questions, because what's the worst that can happen? I don't go through to tomorrow. If I was to die today, I'll just be honest to you, if I was to die today, then I've had a great life. I have, every single second, every single day, I've enjoyed. And if you can't say that, then maybe you're doing something wrong about what you do on a daily basis. Effective communication is not just about yourself and other people, it's about what goes on inside your head. So I'm going to quickly give you some story, some silent storytelling and we'll end on this. I'll give you a quick clue how this works. Right, so with this, I'm not going to say anything. I just want you to, to, to do this. So. Okay, some people doing it, some people not doing it. That's more than fine. Remember, it's not about me. I know how this works. It's up to you. <laughs> feels silly, but feels good, yeah? How many people are ready to begin the next phase of your life? If that's you, put your hand up, let me see. Okay. The world will test you. The world will go and change the way you do stuff. But you shouldn't let it hijack you. I'm going to show you something that is, there's misdirection everywhere. There's, when you watch the news, there's fake news everywhere. There's politics everywhere. There's challenges, but you've got to be true to yourself. Let's do an experiment. This is something I do when I do my shows, like I did last night for QE2. Everyone stand up. Right. I'm going to end on this. Right, I want you to, everyone stand up. I know it's a bit of extra effort. Oh, I didn't say I was going to have to do some work. Standing up's not work, trust me. <laughs> All right, we'll put your right hand in the air like this. Okay, just want to see if we did have sweat patches. No, but right hand yeah. I wonder if you can see this probably then turn your hand into a gun. Can you see that gun? At the back, I'm not very tall. I should stand on a chair, really, but they're all a bit wobbly. Can I stand, let me stand on a chair. I'm going to apologize to the hotel. I have got clean trainers on. The, at the back, you'll be able to see me better. Oh. <laughs> hey, there's one. If I, was to, if I was to die today. Near the height is not too much. No, no, it's sure. simple. Right, so, turn your hand into a gun. Very good, you can see it right now. Turn your gun into a circle. Okay, can you got that? Okay, put a circle here. Very good. I want you to look at your circle, look at my face. Look at your circle, look at my face. Circle face, circle face, circle face. And I put it on your chin. Thank you. How many people have got a chin on the side of their head? And how many people got a chin <laughs> down here? That's misdirection. That's what the world does to you until you take control. Give yourselves a massive round of applause. Well, I'm not going to continue because I think there's enough, enough there for me to play with. You create your own story. You create your own life. I'd love you to connect with me online. On LinkedIn, I gave you a WhatsApp code to get my free book. And also on my WhatsApp group. With that, my name is Dave Craig. It's been a pleasure. Look after yourself and thank you. You should have at least one question. So who thinks who's going to ask the most powerful question of the room? That's another way of asking any question. You know what one. So, uh, Louder. Everybody got to hear you. You need mic? No, I'm not giving mic. He's got to be powerful. <laughs> okay. uh, so the, the superhero avatar that you were talking about, uh, how do you know when to switch him on and switch him off? And at what point does the superhero say that, you know what, fuck it, I'm not going to do this anymore? Because <laughs> I've tried it at some times, the superhero just picks the finger. Okay, <laughs> that's a great question. It's a great question. But here's what happened. 
You stood up to ask a question, and that superhero is saying, I want to ask a question. You started mumbling the question, Emma said, speak a bit louder, that superhero then spoke a bit louder. Then you asked a question, which is a great question, which I will now answer for you. Your superhero is knocking on that door all the time, but you doubt it. If you were to go to another speech presentation and they said, any questions, you stood up straight away, put your hand up, and projected better. Then that superhero is starting to win a lot better. But you're always in a battle with your superhero. But the right, if you watch Marvel movies or any superhero stuff, they're always fighting against the alter ego. It's always a difficulty. But here's a question to answer your question. Is Batman the real person and uh, Bruce Wayne is the fake? Is Superman a real person and Clark Kent the fake? Which is which? Everyone's gonna say, well, the real person is the one in the suits, it's not the person that goes out and flies. And that's what I want you to have as a dilemma, because they're all labels. You create them, the very fact that you're having that dilemma, thinking about it, means it's starting to sink in. The question for you is when you want to start using your superhero. Let's just play with that idea. What name, would, what's your middle name or what's your nickname? Uh, Chabu. Chabu, all right. Chabu's your superhero, right? What's your normal name? Baron. Varun. So you're Varun normally, but Chabu is when you step up. Chabu is talking to me right now. Varun is going, up to, I'd like to speak. Chabu takes care. I would give Chabu as many opportunities as you can when you find yourself challenged. That could be at work when you're trying to finish a proposal. It could be when you're talking to a member of staff. It could be when you've got to look at your vision board or whatever you're creating and set some goals. Go, right, you know what? Varun will go to a certain level, but Chabu will take it off the, off the charts. Chabu, you fill it in. Nobody else is going to know. They're not going to think that you're mad talking to yourself because you don't talk to yourself like that. They'll think you're mad if you do it. I just have it in my head. I just now am Max most of the time. Not when I'm with my daughter because I don't want Max to deal with her. I want me to deal with her. And I want me to deal with my family. But in business, it's completely different. So it's an ongoing challenge for you. But you'll know when you get achievements and you'll know when things work out. And you'll know when you get a, a conflict saying, I don't know if I should do that. The answer is probably that you should. And let Chabu do it for you rather than that room. Does that make sense? Perfect. Excellent. If you watch maybe do Marvel movies or any superhero stuff, they always get on a learning curve. <coughs> First thing is it starts off difficult and then they get better at doing it. In fact, there's an actual format for doing it, which I don't have time to share with you today. There was a format for how we write movies and business storytelling, and it always goes the same. 99% of, of movies have the same story. 99%. It's called The Hero's Journey. If you look it up, you'll see how that applies to you as well. But great question. Thank you. <coughs> Yeah, I have a question. Hi, my name is Ahmed. Um, you spoke about What's your superhero name? It's Ahmed, AJ. AJ is your superhero name. Yes. See how it works. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Go on, Ahmed. Uh, you spoke about being content and being happy, somewhere in between. I was trying to figure that there's a term called being mediocre. Where did that fit? Um, I've been, it depends on what me, being mediocre means. You know, when you're dead, you're a long time dead. What we look at mediocre is in comparison to ourselves or comparison to other people's versions of what they're doing. You're always good, but mediocre, it's like for instance at school, my daughter, I don't think I've ever read her school report, ever. Why? I don't care. I look at her and she's smart. My wife checks everything, and she says she's doing well, but my daughter's happy, and I believe that she'll be able to start her own business and do all the stuff she needs to do. The qualifications are, everyone's qualified, overqualified to go out there and get a job. What's the point in having, in, in having all the qualifications if everyone's at the same level? So you've got to work out what's your angle. And there's a way of doing it, and there's three circles I'll share with you if you haven't done it before. Anyone heard of the hedgehog concept? Which is uh, what John, um, not John Maxwell, Jim Collins talks about. The hedgehog concept has three things to it. It's three circles. Imagine a Venn diagram. So it's three circles like that. I've got it somewhere in here. Okay, first one is what are you potentially the best in the world at doing? What can you turn around and say, I'm brilliant at doing that? Second one is what am I passionate about that I love doing? I'll never get bored of doing it. And the third one is what will people pay for? Now, 
When you get all three, what am I brilliant at doing? What do I love to do? And what will people pay for in the center? The reason it's called the hedgehog concept is because a hedgehog or a porcupine is a pretty boring creature unless you're a female hedgehog or whatever, you probably like them a lot. But for everyone else, it's just really boring rodents. But nature has made it so powerful at what it does that predators can't get near it. Gets near it, curls into a ball, spikes come out, and nobody will do stuff. So, apart from when they cross the road, they're not very good at that, but nature didn't set up cars. But, so, when you work on what your own hedgehog is, what you're brilliant at doing, what you love to do, and what people will pay for, then you've got your own natural hedgehog. You won't be mediocre at that. You're only mediocre if you don't have all those three things. Why? Because you're comparing yourself to other people. And other people will always be somebody better. There's nobody in the world better at being Dave Crane than me. There's people better at doing what I do than me, but nobody's better at doing my version. But right, I, the location thing, you know, my journey is my journey, it's not anybody else's. So you're the best version of you to be you. And what happens at the end of your life is still you. So stop comparing, there's no mediocre. You can have bad days. You know, I, I get grumpy, I have days when I don't want to get out of bed, same as everybody else does. And I accept that that's me at that time. But it's not mediocre, it's just me. Is that how you know? Thank you. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the show. That's what I can do live at a moment's notice. If you want to get better at what you do, connect with me directly. You can see all the contact details for the many programs and offers that we have for your systems and your team to take you to a brand new level as a speaker. Right now, I'm going to take a bit of a break. I hope you enjoyed it. Join me on Friday for our live Q&A on LinkedIn. That's at 1 o'clock. That's uh, UAE time, that's Dubai, or that's 10 o'clock. If the clocks hadn't changed when you're watching this, it won't make any difference anyway. <laughs> it's only live. That's in the UK. And uh, I look forward to seeing you then. Have a great week. Look after yourself. And remember, get yourself out there. Speak on stage.